And in trying times like these, people often rely on their faith as a source of encouragement. But as the number of COVID cases rise, so do the limitations placed on religious services and congregations. So when your faith gets tested, how do you move forward? Joining us now to weigh in on this conversation are three leaders of different faiths in our country, Archbishop Gregory Amond, Rabbi Rachel Ain, and Imam Dawood Walid. Thank you all for being with us today. It's so important. I know so many people are looking forward, forward to what you have to say. And Imam, I want to start with you as we all try to navigate these uncharted waters. What do you recommend people do to keep their faith during times like these? Well, besides the advice that's been given by the National Muslim Task Force on COVID-19, as far as staying away from large gatherings right now, we are encouraging congregation and community uh, through uh, picking up the phone and calling fellow congregants, uh, calling family members, as well as tuning in to uh, religious talks and uh, sermons that are being given online right now. Uh, for instance, I've moved all of my uh, sermons on uh, online right now, and Friday, today is our day of congregational prayer. So at 1 p.m., uh, I will be given uh, the sermon and uh, encouraging our people to uh, stay patient and stay uh, precautious, but to also have a uh, hope in times like this. That's right. We can all stay connected still. Rabbi Ain, I want to ask you about that because obviously your role has changed so much in light of the coronavirus. How are you reaching your congregants? We're doing it in a variety of ways. We are creating person-to-person -person connections, making sure that members of our synagogue of all ages are reached out to. We have twice daily services that we're doing on Zoom that you don't need a password to log into, our morning services and our afternoon and evening combination services are all done and we've been having um, huge numbers of people, not just from our community, but from people who live throughout the United States and Canada. I've been teaching classes online. We had people as far away as Israel and Uganda join yesterday. Um, we are offering preschool moments of engagement. Our teachers are working very hard with our students and families, and we are having our Hebrew school take place online as well. Wow, it sounds like there's even been an expansion of sorts given these uh, times that we're in. Archbishop Amen, I want to turn to you now. We know the president has placed restrictions on mass gatherings, so talk about how you're continuing to serve your congregation and how you're encouraging people to keep observing when their place of worship may be closed. Thank you very much. It, it's certainly a challenging time. It's a time of uncertainty and fear, and people feel that, and it's an opportunity for them to realize that God does not abandon us in these times, but he walks with us and carries us. I'm very pleased to say that we have over 100 parishes in this archdiocese, and most of them are doing something on Facebook, live stream. Uh, it's amazing to me how many of our pastors and uh, clergy, religious, and, and lay leaders have reached out to people in a very strong way. The guideline in the state of Louisiana right now is that we cannot have a service with more than 50 people. And so we are very much uh, consistent with what's being asked of us. And so we are having some services, but they're very lightly attended so that we can stay within that restriction. It's a time where people come together both in with one another, a few, less than 50, but it's also a time that we're united in faith as a community. I know faith has never been more important than right now. Archbishop Amon, Rabbi Ain, and Imam Walid, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We certainly today we certainly appreciate your time, and I know so many of the people who rely on you appreciate your efforts as well to keep everyone's faith strong.